I know this video is long overdue, but I was just waiting for the new version of Gear Tracker to arrive, and I'm glad to say that it's finally here. Hey everyone, my name is Guus, that's G-U-U-S, and today I'll be showing you how to create custom profiles for your gear tracker activities. Now before I do start with that tutorial, I do want to quickly go over the new features that come in this new gear tracker update. So I will give an overview right there. In case you are wondering, what is this gear tracker thing you are talking about? Gear tracker is in my opinion, the best activity and sports tracking app for the Samsung smartwatches. So this is the Gear S3, but it also works for all the Galaxy watches. And I did a review of this app not too long ago. So I will link that right up there in case you want more information about Gear Tracker itself. But looking at the new features, there's one big overhauling feature in this update, and that is the new premium mode. So Gear Tracker itself, you pay about seven euros. I don't know what it is exactly in dollars and uh, other currencies, but about a slice of pie for the app itself. And then you get great basic functionality, which I also reviewed in the review before. Now, in this update, a new premium mode is introduced. This premium mode is a subscription based service and you pay about one euro and a little bit per month to subscribe to the service and get a bunch of new features. So the features are right there at the moment and we'll also uh, run into some as we're setting up the profiles. But I do think it's very important to realize that yes, you are paying for the original app already with some great basic functionality in case you want the premium features. It's what, a very cheap cup of coffee once a month that you have to sacrifice in order to access these really nice features. But that's it for the overview. So let's go and uh, have a look at how to create profiles. Now I only have one camera at the moment since I am at home in the Netherlands. So I'm gonna have to kind of move you around, give you a good overview of the watch. So I will see you in a split second. Here we are. It's not too bad to be honest. I'm pretty happy with the little setup I managed to set up. So the profile I'm gonna set up is a profile for running interval trainings. It's not because I specifically wanted to set up this profile, but I noticed before that when setting up this profile, I go through most of the options of the profile setup. And I figured by setting up this specific type of profile, you would get a good idea of how to set up your own profiles, make your own configurations, and uh, figure it out yourself. But let's get started by, of course, starting up Gear Tracker, shall we? You can see I'm currently subscribed to the premium option right there by the little star. So any options that we're gonna come by with this little star, you have to remember that they're part of only the premium subscription. All the rest is just the normal pay once a version of Gear Tracker, as I also reviewed before. So let's start off by setting up our profile and of course, I always start all the way to the left right here at zones. For each of these different partitions, as you could call them, you have a couple of uh, options you can define if that makes sense. So for zones, for instance, you have the default and then zones A, zones B and zones C. Also this list selection is part of the premium uh, subscription, but for you, you could just tap the name and it's gonna scroll through all the options. So it's just so you know that you have four different zone options or uh, specifications you can define. But that being said, let's go into zones. So zones is gonna allow you to specify zones for your heart rate, your pace, and also power in case you're using a stride foot pod. So right here we have heart rate, pace, and power. And for any of these options, uh, you're also gonna be able to actually change the name. Defining zones for all, of, all three of these is relatively similar. So I will just go into pace. We will see the different zones that I have defined. You can define a total of six zones, as you can see. So each zone is just a tempo. So this is uh, minutes per kilometer for me. So uh, as you can see, this is my slowest zone, which goes from any slow pace up to 450. Then we have 450 to 410, 410 to 355, et cetera, et cetera. In case you want to make any changes, you can always only change the right number right here. So if I tap here, it's just gonna give me 410. Oh wait, let's just, come on, you can do it. There we go. So it's gonna give me 410. If I want to make this 420, I just change it like that. And then now that this is 420, this is also automatically gonna change to 420. So you only have to define one number for each zone 
and the previous number it just takes from the previous zone. So then we move to the next option right here and that is layouts. So I'm going to select layout C and then go right into the options. So we're going to start off with the layout that is predefined for us, if that makes sense. So all the way, everything to the right here is the layout, which we're going to be able to edit and define and make exactly uh, the way we like it. Then the most left three dots right here are just different options for these layouts. So you can change the theme of the layout. You can change the font color. This font color will change based on the zone that you're in. For instance, if you have a, a part of the layout that indicates your pace uh, at this moment, then it's going to show you uh, based on the color, it's going to show you which zone you are in, which is then respective to the colors that we saw before when defining the zones themselves. So if we go to the left, we can change the name of the layout by just tapping up there. Then uh, each layout has different parts, if that makes sense. So you have a layout while you are tracking, but then uh, you also have a layout for viewing. So once you have finished the activity and you go back into your logs and you have a look at your activity, this is the layout you're going to be pre presented with, which is often just slightly different from the other one. So this one has the title and then the date. Then we also have a layout for when you pause the run, which can be very nice. So you can see this is a relatively small layout. You can define it however you want. Then we have a layout for each lap or interval split. So that's just a little pop up that's going to show up. And then we have a layout for the different alerts. So those are zone alerts for your heart rate or your pace. And then we are back to tracking. Then there's a couple of settings here, which might be interesting to also have a quick look at. So we have the titles of the little boxes you're going to see on your layout. You can set them as text or as icons. I personally don't like the icons that much because they confuse me a little bit. So I'd like to keep it on text. And then when editing, uh, you can, in my case, I just open a little window by swiping up, but you can also have this icon appear on the middle of the screen and you just tap that to change your layout. I will just keep the swipe up option and you're gonna see what I mean by that. Then all the way to the left here, we have some final things. So you can reset the layout. There's a little bit of help, although it's not as much as is on the wiki. So I would always, if you have any questions, um, well, I mean, either ask below or uh, check the wiki. And then uh, right here we have the chart time. So if you add any charts to your watch faces, um, this is the time that's going to be uh, displayed on those charts. In this case, I'm only going to define the tracking layout for us, uh, but any other layouts you can always uh, change by just tapping right here and make your changes to them. What I like to do for layouts is kind of think out like, what do I want to have on my layout? So that's why I drew out a little bit of an example right here. So for this layout specifically, I want to have my home screen, which is zero which indicates the times that I've been running this interval. So it's the life pace, the pace that I'm running at this moment, and then the distance and the time for this interval. Then if you go to the left, you have kind of an overall basic average tracking, which uh, indicates the average pace, the average heart rate, the distance of everything combined, so the entire activity, and then the time. To the right, we're gonna have the lap um, or interval list, so it's just going to be a big list of all the intervals that we've run before with the distance and the time per interval. And then I really like to add a maps to my watch faces because in case you get lost, you can just kind of look at where you ran before and then find your way back like that. Now you're going to have to define this before in your watch faces. So I like to add these. There's a bunch of different options, but I hope that by showing you how the map works, you can also figure out how to add charts, for instance, to your watch faces. So yeah, the map just so you don't get lost. So now that we know all that, let's define some watch faces, shall we? So right now we have the default uh, layout C, which has all these different parts to it. And we can see that there's actually a home right here. So what we can do at any point, and this is what I indicated before, I will swipe up to open the editing menu, and then you can actually uh, set any part of this watch face as your home, uh, add different templates, move this part of the watch face, one to the right, one to the left, um, and you can also change the layout itself. So what I like to do, because right now there's 
a lot going on as you can see. So first I'm actually going to define the different layouts of the watch face. So let's get started by that. So I'm actually looking over to my paper right now and my home screen, for instance, is going to have all the information for this current interval, which in total is three different uh, parts. So we have one, two, three. Okay. Yeah, that works already. Then when we go to the left, that's where the basic average tracking uh, yeah, statistics will be shown. So it's pace, heart rate, distance, and time. So it's four of them. We have four right here. I do know I can also get it differently. So if I swipe up and I go to change layout, right now I have this layout selected, but if I scroll through, we should be able to find another layout that also has four squares, but it's more in like a cross in the middle. I think it's, yeah, right here. So you can see what I mean by that. And then if we go to the right of the home screen, we have the lap and interval list. This one is a little bit different um, because you can't define it like this. The way you can define is it is by adding it separately. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the home screen, swipe up and then template right. I'm going to tap it right there. And this is going to show all a bunch of different templates for gear tracker. But at the same time, it's also going to show um, those things you have already defined in other watch faces. So you can just simply copy them over onto this, this watch face, for instance. So somewhere right here, there should be a lap list. Yeah. And here we are. So I just scrolled around until I found it. And here we have the lap list. It should also show up for you because I think this is where I originally found it as well. So you can see it's called lap list. And then on the left, you have the lap numbers their duration and their distance in kilometers. So we're not going to have to change anything about this actually. So now I tapped that and this simply added that to the right of my home screen, as you can see right here. So now we have the lab list defined. This means, I mean, personally, I don't like these heart rate overviews. I don't really use heart rate when running. So I'm actually going to de delete uh, this part of the watch face by just clicking remove. And then we have the map. The map uh, works similar actually to the lap list where you can just find it by swiping up and then doing templates to the right or to the left. It doesn't really matter, I guess. It is right here. So yeah, right here you can see there is the option to add the map um, to your layouts. But right now map was already here. So that's that. Lap list should work perfectly. Then this one, we're going to have to add it a little bit and this one. So this one, I wanted to have all the information for the current interval we are running. So right now we have the average pace per kilometer, which is not what I want, right? So I just simply tap it. So you always have a bunch of options. So you have, as you can see, a bunch of kind of standard options right here. If you want to go to more specific options, you just tap here and you select your category. So in this case, I want to go and select current lap, which is the same as current interval. Um, so I'm going to select it. And then we have the lap number, the lap name. There you have the title, which is the number and the name distance, and then everything right there. So you can see the lap pace, which is the average pace for this lap, which is not really what I want. I actually want the life pace which is not under the lap because it just measures it as you are going and not overall for the lap. So let's have a look at where it would be located. It might be located under standard. And I also always have to still search for it. It's not super obvious. And this process does take some time, as you can, of course, see by the length of this video. It's also once you've set up your watch face, you don't really have to look back to it. It might take a little bit of trial and error to set it up uh, at first, but then afterwards it actually works really well. So right here we have pace. So this is under the standard category and the normal pace. So I'm going to go and select that. Then the next one is we want the distance. Yes, the distance for this specific lap. So this time I am going to have to go to the lap uh, category, which is right here, current lap. And then I'm going to go to distance. Yeah, right there. And then the duration, 
At this moment, you can see the duration is overall. So it's not specific to the lap because the lap is the little like arrow icon right there. So we're going to go duration and we're still in the lap category right here. So we can scroll down and then it should say somewhere duration. Yeah, here it is. And as you can see, there's a bunch of options you can uh, pick and choose from, but I'm going to go for duration. So now we have this one set up. We have our current pace, then the distance for this lap, and then we have the duration of the current interval or lap. So then we're almost done with this watch face. We just need to go to the left right here and make some changes to this one. So this is my basic uh, average tracking part of the watch face. So these ones you're probably going to find under the standard option, the average pace, which is right here. Just tap it. Then here we have average heart rate, which now we're still in the same category. So we're probably going to find it here somewhere. No, we're not actually. So right here, we have only have things for like speed and such and time. So probably heart rate, we're going to find somewhere down here. Yeah. So we have an entire heart rate section and then we have the current heart rate, average heart rate, which is right here. You also have minimum, maximum calories, but we're going to select the average heart rate as I said already, which is right there now. So then to the left of this, we're going to have the total distance. And this one's going to be in the standard category again, right here. And then the duration, total duration right there. So right now we have it all defined. So we have our home screen with the current kind of lap or interval to the left. We have an overall overview screen. Then we have the lap list and then we have the map so that we uh, don't get lost. So now you can go around and do the same for all the different other layouts. So as you can see now, when I go to the right, these haven't been edited yet, so you can define them yourself. But I think you get the general idea of it. Now, I hope you're still around because the layout section is definitely the lengthiest part of the setup. So you've made it all the way through it, I should say. So let's go one more to the right. And this is intervals. Of course, we are defining intervals right now. So we should go and define some. I actually already tapped it, but we should go here because you have a different, a couple of different options when setting up intervals. You can do go rest, uh, pyramid, custom, and then uh, laps. Personally, I just use go rest. Like even if I do a pyramid schedule, I just use the go rest intervals with the manual option, which I will show right now. So if we go right here to the option, uh, warm up, I personally don't have turned on, but of course you could, if you turn it on, you can set like a certain distance or a certain time to do your warm up. Um, personally, I don't use it. So I'll just keep it off as it is. <clears throat> then you can do the set. So in this case, the set looks as follows. So we have the first one, which is go. And then you have rest. So this is for a training where you run, for instance, for two minutes, then have a minute of rest, run for another two, have another minute of rest, etc. And you can set up how you want to start these intervals or end these intervals. So as you can see right here, if we tap right here, you can actually um, select like a distance or a time or just manual. In case you're using manual, you're going to have to dive into the options and select like the double click or whatever it's called. I'll put a little title down here uh, as to what it's called exactly. But I personally really like to use manual um, simply because I can vary the distance and the time that I do my intervals. So I can just press the button and then it starts a new interval, which works perfectly for me. But of course you can set up time. Uh, it takes maybe a little bit of figuring out, but it's going to work. Uh, so then you have cool down, which is pretty much the same as a warm up. I personally do not use it. And then you have some different settings for the notifications that are going to show up. So uh, when you complete a lap, I have it set. So you, the screen actually turns on so you can have it ignore or turn the screen on. The pop up is going to have a certain duration in my case, five seconds. And then you can have some uh, feedback as well. So you can have a warning. I think this is like for distance, like 200 meters before you finish the lap or something like that. It's just like, Hey, 
you're almost finished with this lap so keep that in mind uh, and then when it's complete you can also have a, a certain reminder or something so you can have sound sound and vibrate none and just vibrate for my lap complete i have vibrate just to have some haptic feedback that tells me hey you have completed your lap let's go to targets and targets i personally don't use a whole lot so i don't really have a very clear idea of how to set this up but i have some things set up so you can set like a distance target a duration target a pace target and then you can actually add um, these little elements to your watch faces or to your layouts which then show you if you're on track for finding your target or beating your target so um, if you want to play around with it it's right here i personally don't use it but i think it's a nice feature if you're really working towards a goal and uh, trying to achieve it so then we go to the right and we have alerts and alerts are actually very nice as well. I have alert C selected, which should be fine. So here you're going to set up the different alerts that you're going to get during your workout. In this case, a run, for instance. So what you can set up are splits. So if I tap right here, yeah, there we go. So we have the split turned off right now. But if we turn it on, you can set it for either a time or a certain uh, distance. Well, this is time and the other one is distance. So for instance, during my normal runs, I always have a split set up for one kilometer. So every kilometer, it's gonna tell me how long I am running for, uh, what my average pace is uh, over that last kilometer, for instance, and all those different things. So I personally really like to have those on during my normal runs. If I'm doing an interval workout, I personally don't have these on because it gets kind of confusing and if you're doing an interval you're kind of working based on those and not on the split times you have so then I do turn them off uh, here you have kind of the same settings that we just had uh, in the interval section and then you can actually set up different zone alerts as well so if you want to stick within a certain zone during your run and you want an alert when you're too fast or too slow you can do that right here so you can set it up per like interval section actually so you can have like you have the go and the rest part of your interval workout right so you can say like oh during my go part i want to stay in zone number let's see in, in zone number three Whereas during rest, I want to stay in zone uh, two, for instance. There we go. And now, oh, wait, I have to, of course, turn it on. And you can set this for pace or for heart rate. So right now I have it set up for heart rate, which doesn't make any sense. It doesn't make any sense for me because I don't have my heart rate set up. I should be clear about that. In case you don't want this, so if you're just doing your normal run and you don't actually have any um, intervals or go and rest uh, intervals or laps set up, you can just use this any. So in, ca in the case I want to define like the speed for zone two all over my run. So it doesn't matter if I'm in a go or a rest interval, uh, the any will work just fine. In my case, I'm actually not going to set up any intervals for this workout. Finally, for alerts, we have a couple of options. So out for is the time for which you are out of your zone that you have defined before you're going to get a notification that you're out of the zone. So in this case, if I've been out of the zone that I've defined that I want to stay in for more than a minute, in that case, I'm going to be notified of that and it's going to show the little pop up screen. Then sleep is after you have been notified that you're out of your zone. How long is the watch going to go to rest? So after uh, I've been notified, it's going to go to rest for a minute. And uh, after a minimum of a minute, in case I'm still in the wrong zone, it's going to remind me again that I'm in the wrong zone. So in theory, I have about a minute to get back into my zone and then it won't uh, annoy me again. And then here we have a couple of settings again, and these kind of are kind of similar to what we saw before and the feedback you have right here as well. So you can actually set different feedback um, for whether you're above your zone or below your zone, if that makes sense. So in this case, I have just sound and vibrate for both, but it is a different sound. And then we are almost done. I told you it's a lengthy process, but just stick with me because um, we're going to get through this. So finally, we're going to combine all the settings that we just created into one profile. 
So I actually already created a profile right here called tutorial. So I'm going to select that and go into it. You can always uh, create a new profile by scrolling all the way down here and then finding the duplicate button right here. So then it's going to duplicate the profile that you're currently in and then you can change it to whatever you want. Of course, we're going to first select the layout. So I'm going to tap right here and I can select the layout that I've defined. In my case, layout C, as I already said, then alerts, we're going to select the alerts that we had set up. So in my case, that was alerts C, which is down here. Zones, we have default selected already, so I won't play around with that too much. Intervals, go rest is already selected, which is the one that we defined, so that's perfect as well. You can set a target for this one. In my case, I don't have them defined, so that's gonna work just fine. And then you're gonna have a bunch of different other options as well. So right here, if we go into sources, you can select the, D the GPS sensor, the heart rate sensor, whether you want to use it or not. So in this case, I'm using GPS to calculate my speed, which I think is the most accurate. So that's the one I'm going to use. Distance, you can also define GPS. I don't know why it's being a little difficult right now, but you can also define GPS right there. Cadence and power, I don't have at the moment. So those are the sources. Then there's some screen options, so you can say to keep the screen on, you can use the watch default or 10, 15 or 20 seconds. In the case of this for the uh, interval workout, I will keep the screen on. But of course, if you keep the screen on, it is going to be a little bit uh, more battery draining. Then there's a screen mode, which is new with this last update. And as you can see, it's a premium feature, but you can choose to have it look as like an LCD and a dimmer LCD, which might be quite nice. To be honest, it's not as hard on the eyes, but I like this one because that's the one I'm used to. Right here, we have a couple of options and I was very confused at first of what these are about exactly. But this little home thing when tracking, you can select hold home or ignore. In case you select hold home, what is going to happen is when you turn it away and you come back, it's going to switch back to the home screen that you've defined of your layout. So in my case, that was the current interval metrics. You can also cycle the layout automatically so you don't have to turn the wheel or swipe yourself. So you can say, OK, I want every part of it uh, two seconds, three seconds, five seconds or just don't cycle at all. I've personally never used this, so I would say don't cycle at all. Then you have pause mode. So here you can define uh, whether you want auto pause. So if you stop running, your watch is going to recognize this and it's going to pause automatically. You can have it disabled, which is kind of race mode. So in case you don't want any accidental presses, just have it like this. But in my case, I have it enabled and on manual. So whenever I press this button twice, it's going to pause because if I press it once, it's going to start a new interval. So I have to press it twice, like kind of fast after each other and it's going to pause. Then we have the logging, which is how often it's going to sample your GPS. Personally, after it's been fixed, I've just been logging at one second because it's the most accurate and my watch can handle it. So I'm very satisfied with it. Finish prompt, keep it enabled. It's the nicest. It's just going to give you this little warning um, when you finish your run and you click on finish, it's going to say like, oh, are you sure you want to finish? And you just click yes. And then we have probably my favorite a new feature added right now, also a premium feature, and that is the precision. So in this case, the precision of my time that it shows on the watch will be one second, but we can also change it to be, there we go, it took a while, one hundredth of a second. So then it's, for instance, going to show 6.76 seconds instead of just six seconds, which might be nice for uh, track workouts or shorter distances when doing intervals. So personally, I really like this option and I'm very glad that the developer added it. Then you can also choose whether you want to show or hide this uh, profile on the home screen. Of course, I want to keep it at show. And then I'm going to go right here to my home screen. I'm going to select the profile that I want to use. So tutorial right here. And then I can just go and start. Now, when I press start, we can see the layout that we defined. If we now press this button once, 
you can see that it starts a new interval. In this case, it ended the run first run interval and now we're in the first rest interval, if that makes sense. Um, there's a little bit of a delay when I press, but I also heard that this is probably because of my outdated hardware. So if you have a newer Galaxy watch or watch active, it's gonna work much better. So if I press again, it's gonna start a new interval. So you see this one was the rest interval in which I didn't make any distance. And now if we go here, we can actually see the little list of the different labs that we did. So these are fairly similar, but 25.39 and 25.96 seconds. If we press again, we're gonna add a different element to that list again. In this case, 21 point something seconds. If we can see, yeah, 21 point 54 seconds. If we want to end the run, of course, we can just double press right here, as I already said, and then you can press finish right there. This is the little finish prompt I was talking about. So I'm just gonna let that go. So finish, and then uh, in this case, I'm gonna have to press okay. It is a process, but once you have um, uh, your profile set up properly, um, you will just never have to look back at it and you're gonna be very satisfied with the end result. So let me quickly show you the profiles that I have set up. Well, not the profiles in detail, but just like the names of them. So we have a profile for normal running, then I have a profile for interval, a profile for my track workouts, which has a, the time kind of really big on the screen because that's really all you need when doing a track workout and then uh, a profile for slower running in which I have uh, the zones defined so that I get notifications when I'm running too fast. But yeah, that's it for setting up your profiles on Gear Tracker. <sighs> so that's all I have for you in this video. I tried to go into all the necessary details, but I might have missed some details left or right. So if you have any questions remaining, please let me know in the comments down below and I'm happy to answer them. In case this video was helpful or you enjoyed it, please like and also subscribe to my YouTube channel for similar content to this, tech related and running related. So that's all I have for you today. Thank you so much for watching and you will see me in the next video. Bye bye.